Okay, in this video we're going to take the two MP3s we've already produced, the poem that was converted using the text-to-speech software, and also the then sound background track, and we're going to combine them into one MP3. So to do this we're going to open Audacity. Now within Audacity there's two ways of opening the file, so we can go File Open like we do with most things, but if I click on File Open and I open two tracks, I'll end up with two versions of Audacity, and that's not what we want. We want to see both the files in the same version of Audacity. So the easiest way to do this is to open the file folder which contains our tracks, select both of those tracks, so you can use Control and click or pull them one after another, and just drag them across onto Audacity here. I did it the other way just to show you. To create a new one. Get rid of that one for a second. You can do exactly the same thing as so I could pull the station in Paris in first, and then underneath that I could pull the background and track it. It doesn't matter, but the key point is that you're pulling them across and not going file open. Now probably the first thing you'll notice is that the two tracks are not of even length. The background music goes on significantly longer than the poem does, but that's not a problem. You can see on the poem here you've got these raised sections, these are kind of the um, highs and lows on the sound waves, and then you've got these gaps, and these gaps are the bits where there isn't any sound. So this is the title, and then there's a break, then this is the first verse, then there's a break, the second verse and so on. So we can actually split this up and separate it across. But before we do that, let's press play and see what it sounds like. The station. In Paris, 31, where history weaves, Montparnasse station in morning's breeze. Okay, so I quite like that already. But what we're going to do is we're going to use this tool here, and if you hover over them, they tell you what they are. So this is the selection tool. I'm going to click in this first gap here. I'm then going to use the right hand mouse button on my mouse and I'm going to go to split clip. And if I go to the top here, you'll see that my mouse on my uh, selection tool becomes a hand and that lets me slide this across. So I'm going to repeat that process at each of these breaks. So I'm to split the clip and slide it along a bit. I click, move it a bit too far. Right click, split clip, move it along, keep going. Right click, split clip. Now obviously if you've got fewer sections or a few obvious gaps on yours, you might not want to do this, you might want to just place it in the middle. But this is one way in which we can make our poem fit the music we've got. Okay, I'm going to split the clip again here. I'm just going to keep going. I haven't particularly spaced these out in a logical manner at the moment. I'm just moving them apart so we can see all the different sections. Okay, so now we've got a whole series of different sections. In fact, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 different sections. And they cover a wider range of the music. This bit here, this end bit, you can see there isn't much in the way of um, sound happening here, and this is because the music's fading out, so we don't particularly want to have any of our poem happening at that point. So I'm going to move the last of these, so it's kind of just as the music's starting to end, and I'm going to space them out. So they're more or less even, not worrying too much about it. You're going to have to experiment with this quite a lot. You might find, for instance, that at some points the music's a bit loud and you don't want to have any words there, or at other points there's not much happening and it would be better to have it there. So I'm going to move this along. Then when we're happy, we're just going to go back to the beginning and we're going to press play. The station. In Paris, 31, where history weaves, Montparnasse station in morning's breeze. And if you're doing this, you should listen all the way through to make sure it matches, but you don't want to listen to me playing my own song all the way through. One of the things I notice immediately is the background music's good, but it's a little bit loud. So I could reduce the volume of the background music, or I could increase the volume of the foreground music of the vocals. So to do that, I'm going to highlight all of this, just drag across, and you'll see it kind of goes white. Then I'm going to go to Effects, I'm going to go to Volume and Compression, 
and I'm going to go to Amplify. Now, this increases the number of decibels. If I pull it up to here, you'll see this goes grey, which means it can't take it that high. So let's bring it right the way back down to about 4.7, it's still too high. Take it to 3.6, and you'll see these are now possible, so I press Apply. And you can see what's happened to the sound waves here. Because there's a greater amount of volume, they go to a much higher level. In fact, this is showing basically the number of decibels, and it's going to a higher number of decibels. Now if we press play again, you should hear that the vocals are now much clearer. The station. In Paris, 31. If it was still too loud, I could do the opposite with this one. I could select this section, I could go to Effect, I could go to Volume and Compression, I could go to Amplify, but instead of making it a positive one, I can just bring it back down so it becomes negative. You can see if I apply that one now, this shrinks right down. The station. In Paris. That's a much more subtle amount of sound. I quite liked it before, so I'm going to use Control and Z to reverse what I've done and put it back the way it was. Now, this would work. We could save this and export it as an MP3. Or we could try some different bits. So let's just take one of these to play with. I'm just going to highlight this section for a minute. And I'm going to go to Effects. And then within Effects, there's a few different things we can do. So we can change the pitch and tempo. We can change the speed. So I'm going to change the pitch to start with. And the easiest way to do this is to change the percentage one here. So if I just pull this percentage one up a little bit and press Apply. Okay, and I go back to the start again. Press Play. The station. You'll see the difference in the voice when it hits the second part of the verse. In Paris, 31, where history weaves... That sounds somewhat silly. So I could just do Control z which will put it back. And then I could highlight it again. And for instance, if I wanted a deeper voice on this one, I can do the same thing. I can go into Effects. I can go back into Pitch, change the pitch. But instead of increasing the pitch into a positive number, I could take it down into a negative number, something like this. So press Apply. Again, we go back to the start and press the Play. The station. In Paris, 31, where history weaves, Montparnasse Station in Morning's Bleak. Okay, and you'll see there's a slight drop there. If I took that a little bit further, it would go a bit further down. We can use other effects, though, so let's play over the same section here. So we go to Effects, we again go back to Pitch and Tempo. We change the speed and pitch of it this time, so we speed this up a little bit. You'll find it shrinks because it's going a bit faster, it's using a bit less time. And again, we'll play the same again. The station. So that's the normal speed on this one. In Paris, 31, where history weaves. Okay, so you can hear it sounds a lot higher because it's going a lot faster. If we did the same thing again, we go back into effects, we go back to pitch and tempo, change speed and pitch. But in this case, in Instead of speeding up, we're going to take it down quite a way, take it down to about minus 16. You'll see it extends itself because it's going slower. We'll do the same thing again. The station. In Paris, 31, where history weaves. It might be that kind of voice better fits what you're trying to achieve in your poem. Okay, or we can highlight the same section, we can go into effects, we can go to distortion, we can use something like the wildfire effect, which is somewhat interesting. Press apply. And you'll see that one doesn't even need anything to be changed. And again, you'll see it's quite different. The station. In Paris, 31, in the history moves, one canal station in Morning's Blue. It's not very clear, but it gives you that kind of effect of like a wah wah, something going on in front of a musical instrument. And there's a whole range of different effects in here that you can try. We can try the different special effects. So invert, for instance. Do that one again. So effect. Go to special. Go to invert. You find this should be quite different now. The station. In Paris. 31, 
where history weaves Manpana station in morning's breeze. So you can see what's happening, it's kind of inverting what's happening to the actual effects. And again, if you highlight that one, you go to effects, we can use vocal reduction so it takes more voice out, we can put a repeat in, we can do reverse. The station. It doesn't really make sense anymore, but it could be quite good fun to put in as an extra bit at the end. And these are the effects we can apply to it. One of the other things that's quite good is if our music's a bit too long, we don't want to push this out as far as we can, we can highlight a section, we can go to effect, and then within this we can actually ask it to fade out. So we can go to fading and we can say fade out, and you'll see it changes the end of this. You see it shrinks down there. If I press Ctrl Z it should be a bit more obvious. If you watch this section you should see that kind of returns. So you can start to make the music fade out earlier if you haven't got enough text to fit the section you, you need to get rid of. Equally if there's a whole section of this that we don't want we can just use the selection tool. We can highlight a selection and we can use the delete button on the keyboard and it will just remove that and therefore we can truncate the song to better fit the selection we want. Now once we've experimented with this as much as we want and we're happy with the results and I'm fairly happy with mine, you can go to file, you need to do two things. You need to save the project first. This doesn't export it as an mp3, this just allows me to get back to it later. So I'm going to save it as that file. And second of all we want to go to export audio. Now when we export the audio the format needs to be set as mp3. We need to browse and put it preferably into our OneDrive so we can find it later. And we need to set a file name that ends in .mp3. So I'm going to call this um, the Paris Station. Now we've used some copyright material. Even though we've got permission for it, we still need to reference it. So we're going to go down to the bottom bit in here that says Edit Metadata. I'm going to put my own name in as the artist. And the track title is the Paris Station. This is important because if you play this on an MP3 player later, this is where I'll pick it up from. I don't have an album title, but if you want to make one up, you can. The track number would be one. The year is the present year. If you want to choose a genre, you can. But the comments is the important one. If we go back to our Word document, this selection here, the bit we took the data from Ben Sound, we're going to enter there. So we're going to go Control C. We're just going to paste this into the comment section. Even though it doesn't quite fit here, it will carry it, so that's fine. I'm going to press OK. And now here, we're going to press Export. And you'll see it now takes our file and it exports it as an MP3. And if I want to check this, I can now go into my OneDrive. And you should see we've now got the Paris station here. And if I double click on this, it will open it as a normal MP3. The station. In Paris, 31, where history weaves, Manpana station in mornings. And that can now be downloaded to wherever we want to use it. So that's a very simple and quick introduction to Audacity. There's an awful lot more you can do with this, but I think this will work for what we want to do today.